this is a comparison of the factory kingpin kits, the AND that uh, you used to be able to buy at the dealer, which have long gone, and the KP-122, which was another uh, the number for it as well. I ordered 50 of these kits through China. Okay, I did a couple of samples to make sure that I liked everything, and then I ordered 50 of them. The biggest difference is the shims are okay, the pins are the same, the cups, the thicknesses are a little different, but the diameters are okay. Uh, the cotter bolts are the same. The bushings and the bearings are the biggest difference. There's about a 25 thousandths height difference in the bearings. Now, shim-wise, there's at least twice that here. So push come to shove, might have to... A lot of times when I rebuild these, or when I have rebuilt them in the past, the metal is worn out in here and you have to take a file and file down the edges to the divot in order to get the stuff in there anyway. So push come to shove, if this bearing is a hair on the tall side, you at least want to get one shim in here so that it's not spindle on dog bone metal wearing on each other. Which it can be, it's just better if it's not. You'd rather have a wearable item in there like a shim. Um, typically it takes several. And when I've done them before, as I was starting to say, they've never come with enough shims, okay? The parts are worn enough. Well, with this being a taller bearing, it's probably not going to be as much of an issue. But I already ordered 200 shims uh, from Superior Washer. So I'm going to be including four of those in. With this bearing being a little thicker, you probably won't need them. But I'm going to put them in anyway, because I bought them and I've got no other use for them. So the other difference is the... And if you guys aren't familiar with kingpins, okay, the vehicle load rides here on the dog bone, so it's pushing down and the tire is holding it up. So that bearing is in there so that this thing can turn. Uh, this one's extremely tight. The, big, the other biggest difference here, the more concerning one basically, is the bushings. Okay, dimensionally they're fine. Th these have a gap in them. When they, when they get pushed down into the hole in the spindle, which you can't see off camera there, uh, they compress. So they, they fit over the pin fine now. There's a little wobble there. But when they go, when they get pushed in, they have to be honed. They have to be reamed or honed, honed preferably to fit the pin perfectly, okay? I've talked about that before in other posts and videos and stuff like that. Now, if you notice, the Zerk fitting, the grease fitting here, is not centered top to bottom. That's why the hole in the bushing is not centered top to bottom. It lines up with the hole there, if I can find a way to hold it there. Uh, and that's fine, and that's... The important part is, is that the hole lines up with one of the grease channels. All right, on most of them, the other kits I've had and stuff like that, the hole was in this top channel. Well, here it's in one of the more vertical channels. Okay, it still all squishes out and goes in everywhere, stuff like that. So that lines up with the Zerk fitting, and that allows the the grease to pump up into the top here, around the pin, and down here into the uh, shims, okay? Down here, it would come up into the bearing. The concerning part with this, or the item that needs attention, is the hole on all of these, the samples that I've gotten and the uh, that I've opened up, stuff like that, the holes are all in the middle. That lines up with the grease channels inside, so that's okay. The problem is, is when it goes in here, it won't line up with the hole in the spindle. So that hole needs to be elongated, slotted basically up in uh, toward that fitting. Okay, and the bottom one goes in the same way. You know, the hole is up toward the top there. So we need to go up an eh, eighth of an inch or so. And the reality is, is if, if you install it, you got to make sure it's rotated, okay, so that it lines up with that hole. And if it doesn't quite line up vertically, 
Well, with that Zerk fitting out, you could actually go in and open that hole up a little bit. You just want to make sure you don't screw up the threads in that hole. So, a couple different options. Um, one of them had a slightly bigger hole, so it was easier to get a die grinder in there. Um, you can use a pneumatic die grinder, uh, rat tail file. It's going to be slow and tedious, but the metal is not that hard, so uh, it will be it will be possible to do it that way. Okay, and I'm exploring these options for the customer. For me, if I go to do this, I'm going to set up a program in the CNC mill, and I'll put two of these in each of the vices, and I'll have it come down, and I'll have it elongate that hole, and hopefully uh, deburr it too. We'll see. Anyway, this uh, this bit in a Dremel actually seems to work pretty nice too. I'm not positive it's carbide, but it seems to be cut in a steel okay. Still a little slow and tedious compared to other options, but if you're the owner and you only have to do four of these, you know, hey, not a big deal. You can see I've already I've already elongated it some, uh, so it really you know it'll take about five minutes a piece maybe. Uh, granted, using a regular Dremel would be faster; you'd have more torque and horsepower. Mine is currently set up with a different attachment on it, so I didn't want to take that apart. Just do this video. Uh, that particular cutter pretty much pulls the burrs in, but that's the only other thing you'd want to do is uh, make sure that you get any of the burrs off the inside. Once you go to get it honed, those are going to come off anyway, but uh, you don't want a big burr sticking out in there that damages the guy's hone. Uh, so, I think that's all I really need to go over on this now. I've been wanting to post this comparison. What it is, is if I can sell the kits the way they are without having to modify them, they'll be cheaper. If I get around to getting other things done and I get caught up and, and I get to do this, then the price is going up because I'm going to have to open every single one of the kits, modify every single one of the bushings and put them all back together and then wait for them to sell. Uh, so I've been partly kind of dragging my feet on selling them because, you know, the, most customers should be able to easily do this. If they're going to be tackling their own kingpin rebuilding, then they should definitely be able to do this. Uh, if you can't do this, you probably shouldn't be rebuilding your kingpins.